I did a previous video on this channel about the favorite features I use when using the Blue Letter Bible online tool. It's an amazing tool, and as I got so many comments about it, a lot of people asked about or mentioned the Blue Letter Bible cell phone app. That's what I'm going to talk about today, my favorite tools or tricks and techniques I use when using the Blue Letter Bible phone app. Hi, my name is Sean Summerkamp, and this is Motivation Ear Christian Coaching. Okay, to get right into it, I'm gonna actually hold the phone up as I use it, and I'm gonna record it so that it can be an easy reference. This is how I organize all of my apps. I'm not gonna spend any time on this, but in the top left-hand corner, you'll notice it says Bible. Click on that. For me, you'll have wherever your Blue Letter Bible app is, and mine is the top dead center. I click on the Blue Letter Bible app. What you'll notice immediately is I have this in dark mode. There is no quick button to take it from light mode to dark mode, but I'm gonna show you how to do it because you want it in dark mode when you're using it in church. You don't want someone to be looking there like, hey, what is that bright white light? So I'm gonna change it back for the sake of this video to the white screen. Bottom right hand corner is the gear icon. That's settings. Click on that gear icon, then here's all your preferences. We're gonna go the top, the uh, second one from the top, color settings. Then you'll see at the very top section, it says theme colors, background color, versed text color, verse reference and toolbars. I'm gonna, right now I have it as a black background with white text. I'm gonna change that by selecting background color. Here are my choices. I have this set up already so that white was selected. I'm gonna click that little white button. You'll notice the red, green, blue sliders all move to the right. If you know anything about color and color correction, to the far right, that is white. If you slide them all to the far left, that is black. So I'm just gonna keep them to the far right, select done. Now I'm gonna change my verse text color to black. I click on that, select the, the black icon. You're not gonna have one because you didn't previously select black, so just make sure your red, green, blue sliders are all to the far left. It gives you an example of what that looks like right there under preview, then select done. Then select back. This is again the preferences window when you selected the gear icon. So we're gonna close that. There we go, we have black text on white background. First thing I wanna show you is what each of these nav bar icons mean. Then we can do that by selecting the question mark nav icon in the bottom toolbar, second from the right. Click on that, this is just a photo. But it shows you what each of the icons mean. Come back to this frequently while you're getting to know all the features, it's gonna help you. Again, this is not clickable. If you click on the screen like I'm gonna do right now, it just closes, so that's good. Let's leave it closed. The feature that I highlighted on the Blue Letter Bible online video I did was the ability to look at what the Greek word is and then find where it is at in the rest of the New Testament in this example. You can do the same thing with Hebrew words or Aramaic words for the book of Daniel. So. Let's look at, let's go to Romans 6. Let's just choose verse 8. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Let's say we want to know what the Greek word for died is. So we click that verse, just tap it once. And here is a selection of things you can do with that verse. You'll notice the text at the top that says study has a list of six items to choose. These are the same six that I showed you in the online version that appeared at the top or as a pop-up. They're just here as text. You'll also notice there are ways that you can annotate this scripture by adding notes, creating a bookmark, sharing the verse with somebody, which is very cool. You don't have to drag and drop to share a, a, a verse or highlight it and then right-click share. You can do it right from here. You can also add highlights or listen to it on an audio Bible, very slick. We're gonna look at the interlinear concordance. So let's select that. And you'll notice this is exactly what appeared in the online version. You have at the top the morph morphographical Greek New Testament version, and below the verse is the Textus Receptus, which is the baseline for the King James Version, what Erasmus translated from the Latin back into Greek. 
but you have the verse now, the interlinear that we can look at. I already have it set up for reverse interlinear. This means the Greek, original Greek text are gonna be arranged in the way that we speak in English. So it appears like it's a sentence structure that we usually speak. If you select forward interlinear, that means this is gonna show you Greek word for word, how it appeared in the original text. I don't speak Greek, I don't read Greek, so I can't use this. Those that do speak it and read it do. Let's go back to reverse interlinear. Now we can scroll down and see, it says the verse word for word with the Greek word to the right. Now, if we have died, there it is. That word apo, um, apothnisko, I'm gonna guess at that what it says. We can actually listen to what it sounds like by clicking that little speaker icon. Strong's G599, Apothnesco, Apothnesco. Okay, I butchered it. Apothnesco, that's the word for died. If you want to know more about it, you click that, um, what's known as the Strong's number, G599. That's the Strong's number. I won't get into that right now. But when you click on that, there is the word, Apothnesco. Okay, I butchered it again. But if you wanted to hear it again, you could click that little um, speaker icon. It tells you what part of speech it is, verb, the etymology of it, which is the Greek words that were combined to make it, and then an outline of the Bible usage, biblical usage. Now, this is important, I wanna note. Biblical usage outline means how we believe from a Christian standpoint, historical standpoint, what that word probably meant in context of the rest of the Bible. That does not mean that ancient Greek literature necessarily used the Greek word the same way. You can actually find how the ancient Greek literature is used by scrolling down to Thayer's Greek lexicon. I'm not gonna go into this now. I'm gonna do another video about it in the future because I use this all the time. I am gonna clack, click, hello, <laughs> tap the tap to view entry, entire entry here so you can see what I mean. You will notice it starts giving rex references to old text. I'm not gonna go into this now. I'm gonna do a separate video about it, but that's how you find out where the ancient Greek text is used um, when we wanna look at what else the word could mean. Now we wanna scroll down to the scripture index for Thayer's. That's where all of that scripture index is used for died. But the one that I love, and of course geeked out over in the last video, was where that word died appears in the rest of the New Testament. Even if the English word used is not died, for example, Matthew 8, 32 says perished instead of died. I don't know why the translators didn't just say died, but they used a different word. But in Matthew 9, 24, they did use the word died. In Matthew 22, 24, it was not past tense. It was a verb in the present tense, dies. You can just scroll down and kind of see where how often it's used. On this um, text version, if there's too many to keep scrolling and you get down to the bottom, it shows you where the search results, results are continued. This just has Matthew 8 to Acts 25, so you can then select Romans 5 to Revelation 16 to see the rest and just scroll down. By far my favorite tool. I do wanna show you another profoundly important tool that I use all the time. It's how to get a side-by-side -side view of two different translations of the Bible. I always use the NASB 95, sometimes the NASB 2020. But to use a side-by-side -side comparison, we can click at the top center where the word Romans 6 is selected. Here you have New Testament, Old Testament books listed like a table of contents. To the right of each, you'll notice it says the word Bibles. Let's click that. Here is where you have all the Bibles that you have loaded onto your Blue Letter Bible iPhone app. I do recommend you go down to the bottom here where it says manage Bibles and add a bunch of Bibles. You'll see I already have added a ton. I have New King James Version, NASB 2020, NIV, New Living Translation, Revised Standard, etc. Please go and add a bunch more so you can compare different translations. To do that, select manage Bibles. Here are all the available ones that you can add. You'll notice these are the ones I've already added, but for you to add, you're gonna select the blue Add Bibles button. 
Here's, of course, the ones that I have not added. There are many, many. If I wanted to look at the Septuagint from the Byzantine, I won't get into what that means now. I can select LXXBYZ. You're gonna have a bunch of ones. You know what, I'm gonna add Amplified Bible because that is a good translation. It's gonna say download. I'm gonna select yes. You'll see the little thing there clicking where I can, eventually I'll have access to the Amplified Bible. Let's select the back button now. By the way, before I do, you'll notice a little crescent moon in the top right hand corner. This is so that when you're in church and reading the Bible, you don't wanna be in other things pop up and to notify you, click on that and it says, turn on do not disturb so you can just read the Bible in peace. So while the Amplified Bible is downloading, you hit the back button and I'm gonna go back now. So here it has at the top primary and parallel. I have highlighted here the NASB. That's where you can see the NASB is shown. I'm gonna go back to the Bible section. I'm gonna add a parallel side-by-side -side view by selecting the word parallel. You'll notice yellow parallel view is off is showing. That means I don't have a second Bible. Let's select the NIV to have it as the parallel view. I now hit the books button to go back. I hit cancel and now you'll see I have NASB on the left, NIV on the right. A very powerful thing to you to get to know what different translations means. It gives us a deeper understanding of what these scriptures might mean to us. So we don't just do proof texting, we can look at what other translators said. Instead of going through all of that, I'm gonna show you the simpler way to get to it. And that's the two little uh, Bible icons stacked on the top left corner. Let's click on that and you'll notice, boom, right there, super nice and easy. NASB, NIV. If I want to just go back to NASB, I hit the scroll down feature to none. I then hit go and I have just the NIV version. If you want to add a different one, again, select the little icon, go to New King James Version, select go, and now you have those two side by side. The reason why I showed you the long way by hitting the top, then selecting Bibles is so you could add different versions by selecting Manage Bibles, Add Bible Versions, Add Bibles, okay? Those are my favorite tools to use on the Blue Letter Bible phone app. Please let me know what you think about this. I'm gonna be making more videos because there are new features coming out all the time in the online version and a few, a handful of new ones on the iPhone version as well or the cell phone version. I really hope you enjoyed this, that this enriches you and you get a lot more to God's word as a result. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll know when I create a new video. Please also consider becoming a member at motivationeer.com. Your membership really supports this channel. And don't forget, your career is not just a way to make a living, it's a way to transform the world.